Hello, folks. I uh, I wanted to touch on something that, for a lot of people, is going to be a little controversial or confusing, and that's Bozell's and Bozell construction. Now, the way I myself make my course, which, in my opinion, make the best working course, is either a twisted core where I take a strip of rawhide and I just twist it around, let it dry for a couple of weeks while there's tension on it. And uh, step two is that I'm going to sand it the first time. Now, this is way too long for a Bozell core, but I'm going to measure it out, make sure it's all even, pick out the best part of it, and usually have one that I'm going to use for a Bozell and one that I'm going to use for a quirk, a leftover piece, if it's good. So basically, these two are the same string that I twisted up. Well, no, it's not the same string. But anyway, it could be the same string that I twisted up. If I take a light-colored plastic tape, it's going to be a Bozal cord. If I take a dark one, it's going to be a quirk cord. I want to be able to make that mark in the center of that core because I start braiding from the center, go this way, and then go that way. It's a little trick I learned from some of the gurus that we have in our industry, like Bill Black and Clint Heverdy. They got me started on that. I do use the plastic tape to make a barrier between any moisture that can come from the elements or from the horse's sweat. I, or even while I'm braiding and I got the braiding soap on there, I really do not want this core to get wet and deform and lose its, uh, its flex. Another core I like to use is this. It's the braided core. And it's something that uh, in a previous video somewhere, Jay Atcock was talking about it. Um, it's just a four plate rawhide that I braided up. And then I already took it to a sander, rounded it up, made sure everything is smooth. It's got the same diameter. Um, so before this is going to turn into a bosal, I will... Uh, coat it with uh, some plastic tape, like pretty much just normal tape, plastic tape, and make a moisture barrier. So I really like the feel this core will give. And I can even mix the two, because this one is probably get braided over with rawhide strings. This one is just four strings braided into a round braid, no core in there, but I love the feel of it once it's braided up. So, like I said, if you see closely, there's a little mark here, which is the absolute center of my bozelle. So, I started braiding in the middle of the strings this way. When it's finished, I tie off this way, and then I leave it hanging stretched. I got my nerve buttons already on there that are going to keep my nose knot or my nose button on it, and I'm going to build it up. So I got several ways of doing it. I may cut strips of real thin leather. Now I know you Americans, you work in ounces in weight. We work in thickness in millimeters. So this is like, like one millimeter thick. That's what I used to build up. And then, if I want to have a mousing, I got this tape. And if you'll notice, it's a special tape that stretches. So I can make it fit here as, you know, to whatever shape I want it. And I can really build a mousing on it. Now, what I do with this tape to build up a mousing and with the plastic tape is they overlap halfway. So there's always double layer, like here also, where it does not permit to get any dampness 
in the core of the bozelle. So that covers pretty much that. Now, it all is about the feel you're looking for and what your horse wants. I want a lot of spring in my bozelles, but it's got to be manageable soft. Now, this is a core like this, and it's full kangaroo leather. The cheeks are kangaroo leather, the nose and the heel are kangaroo leather. And I don't do it always. It kind of depends what I feel like, but you'll see that sometimes I will put a, uh, a plug in there to give more room for the Makati. Um, this one's got a little mousing, and there are nerve nuts, but not very prominent on it. <clears throat> and I know there are horses that prefer a full leather bozelle over a rawhide bozelle because no, they may be thin skin and, and what have you. So, <clears throat> for whatever reason, you've got to try it out. Now, of course, on the other end of the spectrum, you got the full rawhide bozelle. Now, this was an experiment for me because, as you can see, there is no nerve knots, but there is mousing here. And uh, Bill Black got me to try in this because... Uh, Apparently, a legend like uh, Bobby Ingersoll liked this nose button the best. With mousing, but no uh, nerf knots in it. So, again, I like that springy feel, but it's still flexible. I can easily shape it to the horse's face. Some horses like a full rawhide bozelle better than they do like a leather. And then, of course, you got... Let's call it the hybrids. This is rawhide body or cheek with not too prominent nerve knot, little mousing, and the kangaroo leather nose knot and a kangaroo leather heel knot just to, you know, level everything out. Now, that one, you know, if you need a little more bite on the cheeks and a little less bite on the nose, that's when I refer to this one. This one also has a braided um, core. And this is Latigo leather and a rawhide nose and a rawhide heel nut. Now, what kind of Material you use for a heel knot is pretty much irrelevant, but I want it to level it out so it kind of makes a, a good picture that I like to see. Again here, little or no mousing this time, a little more prominent nerve knot, <coughs> but the nose knot being in rawhide and the cheeks being in latigo leather for those horses that are like really thin skinned and what have you. Now, I myself, I'm a believer that the Hackamore or the Bozelle, and let's talk about that for a minute. In most regions, anything size half inch or up is called the Hackamore. Anything below that is called the Bozelle. And when it gets more like in the neighborhood of a quarter, you know, they will call it the Bozelita. And there's a lot of people that go anything over a half inches of Bozel and everything under a half inches of Bozelita. I think that's all, you know, kind of like where you're from and where you grew up. But those are pretty much the two uh, ways of describing it. But I want to be able to shape my bozelle i want it to fit the horse's nose but not be tied on it and for me again personal opinion a bozelle is an instrument of signal and once you take the time it takes it'll take less time but i want to be able to convey a signal through my bozelle or hackamore to my horse 
and and go from there so that's pretty much what i wanted to say about the bozelle or the hackamore you know some folk, folks refer to a hackamore if you got the bozelle with a hanger and a makati on it again kind of depends on where you're from I don't like the excessively long hackamores. I break mine anywhere between 10 and a half or 11, depending on if I want to use it higher up the nose or lower on the nose. Where lower on the nose will give me more lateral control, higher up the nose will give me more control over the hind end of the horse. I want my nose buttons. I break them seven or seven and a half inch when they're flat. So if you will measure this from this point to this point, it'll be exactly seven inches. And that's how I like them the best. And I don't care if it's a half inch or a five eighths or a three quarters. I, I like to see those seven inches because that will make sure that these nerve knots are right where there is the most amount of nerves running down the nose or down the face of that horse toward the nose. And the more I can signal on these nerves, the more signal I can convey. That's pretty much it on Akamore so far. If something else pops up in my mind. I, uh, I will shoot a new video. Now I got the new channel. So, uh, guys, enjoy life. Have fun, y'all.